I eventually had a chance to visit St. Francis Xavier's tomb in Goa, India. Oh, wonderful. It's not wonderful. far from where my, my family heritage is. Right. Um, you know, why in the Catholic Church is it important to, to separate out uh, a relic from, from the rest of the body? Well, it's not that, that essential, it's not a central foundation of our faith in any way. There are different portions of the body of the same which are sometimes separated out. And it gives the person an opportunity, uh, in a sense, to venerate the saint, but above all, to commit themselves to Christ. Uh, and it's an occasion, it's almost like visiting the tomb of the saint. Not everyone can go to Goa, and not everyone can come to Rome either. For those of us outside the Catholic faith, I mean, we see the, the throngs of people. We, there's a fascination there for sure. Uh, but, you know, we look at it and we also see a dead man's hand. We uh, Canadians, uh, we do this every year. Uh, people who are not Catholic or of any faith, really, in a sense, we have a parallel to it, which might explain a little bit what this involves. And that's on November the 11th every year. Uh, all the leaders of our country come and put place wreaths at the tomb, the relics, you might say, of the unknown soldier. And I recall when those relics were taken from Vimy, Vimy Ridge, and placed there uh, know, many years ago, what a solemn occasion it was. And it's an occasion when we pray at the tomb of someone uh, to be able to express our reverence and our appreciation for what they signify. And so it's something like that, and not only in a much maybe more spiritual way, that we've always had a great devotion to the great saints who show us how to follow Christ. With St. Francis Xavier, my great lesson I've learned from his life is that there was a priest who was to go from Rome to India, which would have been a very long journey in those days, and he, he fell sick, he wasn't able to, so uh, Ignatius said, uh, there's no one to go. And uh, Francis said, I'll go, and before sunset he was gone and he never returned. Yeah. He died on an island off the coast of China. So that sense of, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will, that is amazingly impressive. So I always, uh, when I pray, you know, praying before the relic of St. Francis Xavier, I say, Lord, help me to be like St. Francis uh, with that kind of disposition. Here I am, Lord. I mean, you mentioned that, but that wasn't always Francis' story. Uh, you know, he was known as a playboy, as an athlete, uh, an intellectual, things that are very far from work, uh, missionary work that we think of. Does that give you hope? I mean, for a generation that often drifts uh, during those college vital years. Well, certainly people drift and they have down through history. I think of St. Augustine, the way he wandered around all over the place. And, uh, it's part of uh, the human uh, struggle. He's a sort of a university student saint in the sense of where he began, he began uh, very far away, even in a culture that was very much rooted in at least the, the signs of Christian faith. Uh, but he came from uh, you know, a very kind of wild life. Uh, but the grace of God cuts through that and penetrates through that, touched his heart. And it was an example of his roommates. Francis says, uh, you know, Ignatius Loyola and Peter Faber. He said, these are really good people. So the witness of those good friends of his led him to say, there's got to be more. That opened him up to receive the grace and the call of the Lord. I think that still happens. It happens lots and lots of times. I'm very encouraged. I'm never discouraged by, uh, you know, the, the presence of the grace of the Lord in this world is very strong. Mm -hmm.